Story time with Fergie and friends. Hello, hello, it's Fergie and friends. It's, it's story time with Fergie and friends. Hello, everybody, and um, hello, mums and dads, granny, and grandpa. Are we there? Are we ready? And it's Sydney Opera Mouse, Sydney Opera House, and Graham Hosking, and illustrated by Inky Stone. Well done, Inky Stone. This is very exciting. So we're going to put on our reading goggles, and off we go. I didn't know that my dogs was, was they digged to Australia, but now they're calling to Australia. Sydney was a little mouse who lived inside a cage. A pet shop found in Sydney's north was where he spent his days. He had no chance to run around, had little room to play. The shop was damp and gloomy. It was dark, cold and grey. Oh, poor Sydney. The animals were packed in tight with cages floor to ceiling, conditions that a little mouse found very, very unappealing. It wasn't such a happy life, poor Sydney felt alone. A place where he could sing and play would make a much better home. Why he struggled making friends, he wasn't really sure. He tried to talk with dogs and frogs and also a macaw. Sydney could not chat with snakes, he, he hissed like a beginner. They always used to stare at him as if it was their dinner. I think he might have been, yes. Quiet as a mouse, it's a phrase some people say, but Sydney was not like the rest. He loved to laugh and play. Sydney had a hobby that he wished he could pursue. Singing was the thing that Sydney truly loved to do. Sydney dreamt of being free and if he had a choice he'd find a place where he could sing and share his special voice. Being trapped inside the shop was not a lot of fun. If he got the chance to leave he'd run and run and run. Then one day a massive storm with howling wind and rain guaranteed that Sydney's life would never ever be the same. The pet shop door crashed open, it made a mighty din. Poor Sydney, he was terrified as wind and rain rushed in. At the entrance to the pet shop, creeping through the grey, daylight where the door once stood, lighting Sydney's way. He saw a chance for freedom and he scuttled through the door. No more change for Sydney, he was going to explore. Sydney sprinted from the shop into the pouring rain. He ran into a station and then jumped on board a train. The carriage that he stood in was a very rusty banger. From the train he saw a bridge. It looked like a coat hanger. He didn't have a moment's doubt. Although the bridge was wide, he'd hike his way across the top to see the other side. He carried on his journey, but then he got a shock. Humans walking on the bridge across the very top. It seemed so strange to Sydney, but unless he was mistaken, the humans, they were only there to have their photos taken. Sydney wondered where adventures his escape would bring. He hoped to find a magic place where he'd make friends and sing. He loved the walk across the bridge, his fir very first time climbing. The mighty storm had ended and the sun started shining. He found the Sydney Tower. It was super duper high. It looked just like a basket on a chopstick in the sky. He made his way right to the top. The view it was so pretty. From the tower way up high, he saw the whole big city. The view was very special. That was clear for him to see. This could be a place where he could sing. Now he was free. He noticed Sam the spider and he asked one little thing. In this tower, Sam, is there a place where I can sing? I'm sorry, Sam replied, it's only you and I. We are the only creatures in this tower in the sky. I wish that I could help you, mate, but I'm in no position. I don't know how to sing and I'm a terrible musician. You'd think with all these arms and legs that I could play the drums, but drumming's very tricky as I don't have any thumbs. Why don't you try at Bondi Beach? It isn't far away. Maybe at the beach you'll find a place to sing and play. Sydney left the tower and continued on his quest. To find a place where he could sing, he'd try his very best. He saw a sign next to a bus, sightseeing tours today. He thought that getting on the bus would help him on his way. He climbed aboard the big red bus and went up to the top. The red bus did not have a roof, so he could not see a lot. The city had museums, an aquarium and a zoo. The place where lots of tourists go to see a kangaroo. The bus arrived at Bondi! Sydney climbed down onto the turf. He in front of him was golden sand and bright blue Bondi surf. Swim or surf, build sandcastles, there was so much to do. Sydney ran down to the beach, he would try something new. A girl sat on the surfboard, it was painted red and black. She didn't notice Sydney, he had sneaked out onto the back. The surfer paddled out to sea and then she caught a wave. Some might you say a little mouse, but never had he been so brave. Sydney felt amazing as they raced towards the shore, proud because no other mouse had ever surfed before. 
then the surfer stumbled and she dropped down to one knee. Sydney slipped right off the board and fell into the sea. <gasps> He'd never been to lessons. Little Sydney could not swim. Thank goodness for the kindness of Diane, the blue dolphin. She swam in front of Sydney and he grabbed onto her flipper. Thanks so much for saving me. You're a real little ripper. What brings a mouse to Bondi Beach, Diane then promptly asked, to find friends and a place to sing, but it's a tricky task. Diane knew of an opera house with singing mice aplenty. Benny Seal, her friend, had told there were more than 20. Tell me please, where is this house? It's where I'd love to be. Diane replied, the harbour near a place called Circular Quay. Sydney thanked Diane as she returned him to dry land. She replied, no worries mate, and flung him on the sand. Sydney found a ferry. It was glistening gold and green. Freshly painted, bold and bright, and the colours were pristine. Sydney jumped aboard and he had cause for celebration. Circular Quay was going to be the ferry's destination. The ferry reached the city and one building topped the lot. The strangely shaped with white roofs looking like sails of a yacht. The ferry passed the building and, in, and to Sydney's great surprise, a seal relaxing on the steps was eating hot meat pies. Well, of course. Sydney knew the seal's name and without thinking twice said, Benny, can you help me please? I'm looking for some mice. I met Diane the Dolphin and she said that you could give directions to a special house where lots of mice do live. Yes I can my furry friend, it isn't hard to find. He then pointed a finger, a flipper, at the white building behind. But one thing I should tell you first before you head on in. In that grand white building they all love to laugh and sing. Yay! When the clock strikes midnight and the humans have departed, the mice come out from hiding and performances are started. Creatures from across the world attend to watch them play. So if you don't like music, I suggest you stay away. Sydney was ecstatic as his favourite thing was song. Finally, he'd found where he was destined to belong. Sydney scampered from the ferry out onto the steps. He saw the opera house stage door and in through it he crept. The tip from new friend Benny turned out to be quite true. Sydney found a room of mice all sitting eating stew. They gave Sydney some dinner and invited him to stay. Sydney told them all about his crazy bonkers day. When the food was gobbled up, the music then began. Some mice were playing instruments, now Sydney had a plan. He started singing softly and nobody said a word. He had the greatest singing voice that they had ever, ever heard. We must stay here, we beg you, please don't go. We're searching for a special mouse to star in our new show. Now Sydney sings in all their shows, it's such a grand occasion and naturally the crowd give him a long standing ovation. You've never seen a little mouse whose smile is quite so wide, performing with his newfound friends to fill Sydney's heart with pride. Due to his performances at Sydney Opera House, his friends and fans alike now call him the Sydney Opera Mouse! Yay! Sydney used to be alone and trapped inside a cage, but now with friends he lives his dreams performing on the stage. He took a chance and chased his dreams, just look how far he's come. But Sydney's big adventures, they have only just begun. Yay, Sydney, well done. And Sid's all about courage and a little help from his friends. And when I was looking at that, I thought, maybe it looks just like I bet Sydney Opera Mouse House has napkins when in the interval. So I went and asked wonderful uh, little elf, elf filly, Here's Elf Philly, and he made, it's called, it's either called the Cock-a-Doodle-Doo, because it looks like a cockerel, or it's called the, the Bonnet, yes. But, what do you think if it looks exactly like Sydney Opera House? Well, not exactly like Sydney Opera House, but it's quite fun to think that you could make a napkin into shapes. And you take Mom's best napkin, take lots of starch, and you could make your very own I think it's probably like a cockerel, do you think? Or a Dutch bonnet? Or Sydney Opera House, I feel. So then I decided that I would take a napkin and I would make it for you. But then, guess what? Guess what? I decided I'd let the little elf filly do it and show you exactly what to do. I wouldn't know where to start. <coughs> Bye everybody. Fergie and friends, with Fergie and friends.